And now, here are your hosts of Pro Wrestling Weekly, Ferran Derry and Lucas DeSangro. Will you stop marking out over there? Sorry. Move over, kid. I'm taking your microphone. You're shallow. You know that? <laughs> I'm running on two hours of sleep. I don't remember what the hell I do anymore. There's the sound of the bell, and we are set to go. This is Pro Wrestling Weekly here on 1490 WBCB and online at WBCB1490.com. Ferran Derry and Lucas Twitch DeSangro, my tag team partner. We are seated at the commentator's table inside the world-famous Monster Factory at 541 Mantua Avenue in Paulsboro, New Jersey. Gearing up for a huge event tonight. We'll tell you more about that as the hour goes on. A lot to get into this week. The fallout from Fastlane and the return that I don't think anybody saw coming on Monday night. Oh, here comes the money indeed, Ferran. That I was watching Raw live because um, it was a school night and I didn't get get to come training. Um, that's the only reason I would have missed training, just, just in case Danny Cage is listening. Hi. Um, and uh, <laughs> Well, you were still studying, so you were doing something, right? Yeah, true. Um, but I was watching, and I was, like, sort of glancing down, up and down. I didn't think anything was going to... And then I just hear, here comes the money! And the whole... First of all, the entire place in Detroit just it erupted in cheers. And I started jumping up and down, like, no way, no way. My parents are watching basketball in the other room. They don't care. And I have to run out and be like, Shane McMahon is on roll. Shane, is, Shane McMahon is on roll. I repeat, this is not a drill. And I even texted you that. Yes, you did, which I didn't see until hours later because I was here training. Yeah, yeah. And even then, it, it, well, even if you hadn't texted me that, uh, the the app from WWE kind of let me know and ruined the surprise a little bit. Yeah, I don't like how that's like, it just... Yeah, in case you miss it, well, then you can't, you, your, your shock is by staring at your phone as opposed to seeing what happened yeah. in that particular uh, live event or uh, or things of that nature. Oh, sweet mercy. The Facebook fan page for WBCB Pro Wrestling Weekly already up in Adam, and I'll have to look into this a little bit more. I was going to say I won't really be doing that over the course of the commercial break because we'll be hopping onto Periscope as something that we started last uh, last week, for yeah. better or for worse. But... WWE, oh, okay, that, that's what uh, John from Northeast Philly posted. WWE taking over the 2016 Academy Awards. Oh, yeah, they did they, 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 the, um, the movie posters. Even, yeah. Even me, he got a little... He talked about Oscar contenders with a sports entertainment spin. I like it. The Monday Night Wars, The Franchise Awakens. I'll have to, yes, yeah, straight out of compound uh, reference to, uh, well, the straight out of Compton movie and uh, the... Wyatt family. Mm. I don't know. They're they're funny and interesting, and I'm seeing them for the first time. Oh yeah, Jobs, J O B S, starring the Blue Meanie, Al Snow, Two Cold Scorpio, and Bob Holly. What about Gilbert? With Where's Gilbert from director and screenwriter Dwayne Gill. Yes, they, they, they had it in there. So there's even a little picture of uh, of Meanie with the Job Squad half shirt. That's great on the uh, the poster here. This, this is live reaction. If you, if you guys this. get the uh, if you guys get the chance though, listen to uh, take. Download the episode of Talk is Jericho with Meanie because it's we listened to it last night on the way down and back from training. It, it's a great episode, and uh, yeah, a lot of, a lot of funny stories and uh, a lot of great interaction and yeah, just a lot of fun overall. Yeah, uh, we're we're just all over the place. So we tend to do that pretty much all the time. Let me see if I can wrangle this back in here. So yeah, Shane McMahon coming out in the midst of the Vincent J McMahon. Award of Excellence Award. Award, yeah. The Award of Excellence Legacy Award. Legacy of Excellence Award. Legacy of Excellence Award, okay. <laughs> I kicked his leg out, out of his, his leg. leg. Yeah, exactly. No, you got to do the pause. You got to kick his leg out of his leg. Yeah. I, I remember the 94 Rumble. I'm just saying, don't, you know, don't. Do, do, do you? Oh, that's right. You weren't born yet. Yep. Just throwing that out there. <laughs> Anyway, so some sort of deal apparently was made between Shane and Vince McMahon a while back, and Shane's now looking for control of the company, and somehow in this convoluted mess, it has led to Shane taking on The Undertaker in a Hell in a Cell match at WrestleMania <laughs> for control of the company. This is a... There, there are a lot of questions left to be answered, but I, I don't know what necessarily to make of them. That's... 
pretty much where I'm at at this point. And there, there are a lot of questions that I'm sure are going to have to be answered. And we may even start to see those answers this Monday as The Undertaker is scheduled to appear. I love how they schedule, like, it's like Undertaker should be like a surprise all the time. I'm just saying, it shouldn't, I mean, advertise a little bit, but I feel like Undertaker is just one of those people, it's a mystique. If it's, it, it, I just don't understand, Undertaker scheduled to appear, so what, did you call him up? Hey, Taker, who dares disturb my slumber? You know, like, I feel like he should just happen. He just happened to be there. Like, yes, yeah, schedule it, but don't tell the fans. I guess, but it, it's more of a reason to get people to tune in. True. Closing in, fast lanes over. We're now, I guess, in the home stretch of the road to WrestleMania. True. But well, actually, no. I guess it'll be after the march. We'll be marching to the road of WrestleMania coming up in a couple of weeks. Yeah. But at the same time, that wasn't the only match that was made uh, on Monday night. Heyman and Lesnar came out, and uh, and Heyman cut a scathing promo regarding the beating Lesnar gave Ambrose in the parking lot earlier in the day. WWE had released the video of quote-unquote fan footage. They had to- I was going to say, that, that that has to be the sharpest fan footage that uh, that has ever occurred. So during this promo, uh, a horn's honked, The next thing you know, uh, an ambulance rolls into the arena, and Ambrose did his best GTA impression and drove the ambulance right in. Yeah. Uh, Still had the neck brace on, too, which I thought was a nice touch. As did Joel Gertner, who put up a post about how it needed a little uh, flair and decor. Yeah. And, you know, Ambrose is hobbling to the ring, just like barely walking. And then uh, and then at some point, uh, you know, he, he gets right. Lesnar just like walks right over him. And and Brock, um, you know, he challenges Brock to a street fight at WrestleMania. Yeah, some murmuring going on at the background. It looks like QT Marshall has just entered the building. We'll uh, we'll see if we can maybe get a word with him uh, before the hour's over here. But this is a big deal, Lesnar and and Ambrose, and a lot of people. Uh, I mean, this is something I've definitely wanted to see out of either of them. I've always once Ambrose got a singles run, and once Lesnar did his thing, I wanted to see one of them at least go into a street fight. And the fact that we're getting both of it in one match, it's. It's who wins this match, the fans do. That's really the, the best way to explain this. They most certainly do. No question about that. And then the uh, the bloody mess at the end of Raw. Uh, that was, uh, I think, the, my opinion on it is that who cares if he used a blood capsule? Who cares if he bladed? Who cares? Whatever. It's it, the fact that they wanted to put that into effect. I think we should just enjoy it and try not to ask as many questions, you know? Well, that's kind of what we do here on the, the radio show. We question answers and answer questions. <laughs> That is a very or, good or point. something of that nature. You know. Well, why don't we go over though the record for predictions starting to go wrong, <laughs> which I actually didn't do too terribly bad. Who who to who to thunk it? I, I, of these seven matches, I went uh, six and one. Well, the seven that we preliminarily predicted, yeah. for lack of a better. Yeah, there was one that was thrown on there uh, as a lot of people joked uh, they were watching a pay per view and a superstars match broke out. That was the gag that was that that old gag <laughs> that was thrown out there I, uh, uh, with Curtis Axel and our truth But uh, yeah. Callisto uh, retaining the U.S. title, winning the best of three falls match. Interesting strategy by Del Rio, uh, getting disqualified early on, but trying to uh, injure Callisto. Yeah. And it worked as he got a, a pin shortly thereafter, so that I, evened up the score. I realized I'm better at predicting I'm not I'm not good at predicting main events I'm not good at predicting divas matches from from I've sort of been keeping track of the notes for predictions and this is this is just a record I've been keeping of it I'm good at predicting like the the mid card singles matches but when it comes to the main events and the divas or at least matches when a title is on the line I get my hopes up a little bit I think that's the problem with my predictions that didn't do too badly for you last year. Or you just mean in recent, like, uh, the last month or two? Last month. I mean, uh, obviously I'm not keeping my my reputation alive because you're beating me in predictions for the year at the moment. Yeah, but it's only two off. I mean, that could be that could, that could change in a heartbeat. Well, seven and six were well, true, but uh, still. Yeah, I mean, we were even heading into it, so that's that shows you how close it was. Uh, the other matches, Becky Lynch and Sasha Banks beating Naomi and Tamina. Uh, we both had that one right, as did the Intercontinental match, uh, Kevin Owens retaining against Dolph Ziggler. 
the one that neither of us uh, got right and the only one that I didn't get right, uh, Kane, Big Show, and Ryback ended up beating the Wyatt family. Yeah. But they got their win back the next night on Raw. Which is good, just not a pay-per-view thing. Yeah. And uh, I don't know, Ry- Ryback why did walking they, out. Why do they have to wear the black trunks? Yeah, I know, just to further the, uh, the, the Goldberg thoughts. We don't want him to be called Goldberg. We want him to be called Ryback. That's his gimmick name. Why does that have to be a thing? So he's now like Ryberg? Yeah, that <laughs> that's actually a really good name. Um, That'll probably end up happening now that I've said it. Oh, Watch. God, yeah. The Let's internet. See, Char- yeah, Charlotte uh, ended up retaining a Divas title, beating Brie Bella. So uh, that match was. Uh, I just, if I can be quite frank here. Um, Why don't you just be quite Lucas? You're better at that. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> and uh, so I feel like the entire pay per view WWE Fastlane could just be an episode of Botchamania. Careful now. Like Matthew. Matthew had, like, almost a feast prepared for him with that. Oh, with that match, you mean? Well, with that match. And, I thought you yeah. said the whole pay-per-view. I was like, wait a minute now. That's, there there were a lot of good things to that yeah, pay-per-view. True. There were a lot of good things. But there were a couple, like, I didn't know how many times did we see a botched schoolboy roll-up happen. I don't know, but I'm not going to call out too much on it because, um, yeah, I'm going to do the smart thing. Mm, good point. Or dare I say the savvy thing. Also, AJ Styles beating Chris Jericho by submission. We both had the, that one right. And then the main event, Roman Reigns beating Dean Ambrose and Brock Lesnar. He's heading into WrestleMania, taking on Triple H. And that sets up the three matches that are set up for the moment for WrestleMania coming up in a few weeks. True, true. Um, this is, no, this is a... Uh... It's looking to be a very nice WrestleMania so far. It's it's always good because they really step up their game around this time of year. They, like, they most certainly WrestleMania, do. WrestleMania, what I love about WrestleMania is at this point, it's a thing where we can't... It's like this. they need to pull out all the stops. It gets to that point, and that's what makes it special. It's like nothing can go wrong with this, with this pay-per-view. Well, as Vince McMahon always says, nothing can go wrong when it's live. He felt that about uh, Monday Night Raw pretty early on when he... Uh, when he started it back in 93. Oh, true. A little interesting mindset, I would say. Speaking, yeah, but speaking of WrestleMania, the WWE Wrestle, they, they've announced their, their uh, sponsorship deal. Yep, we'll get into that coming up uh, in a little bit. Also, Jim Ross signing yet another broadcast deal. It seems like the older he gets, the busier he gets. Ooh. I guess when you have that kind of broadcast pedigree, that sort of thing will occur. Also, the Night of Champions pay-per-view date and location have been announced. We'll tell you when that is coming up. Uh, second WWE Hall of Famer was announced, and uh, let's just say he's got ties to the very place that we're in right now, and it looks like it'll be a Yeselmania after all. Woohoo! We'll tell you about that coming up, but uh, tell you, telling you about something coming up in the very, very not-too-distant future, uh, former ECW star The Sandman, he'll be appearing at George's Cards and Collectibles in the Chamonix Mall location this afternoon from 1 until 3 o'clock. Definitely want to go and check that out. And then make your way down here because you'll have time to do so because the doors open at 6. We'll tell you more about that in a minute. Check out George's three locations, including their original store at 7755 New Falls Road in Levittown, as well as in the Willow Grove Park Mall in the third level between Sears and the Food Court, as well as at the Neshaminy Mall in the Movie Theater Wing. You want to get updates on new merchandise and appearances? Well, the best way to do so would be at georgescollectibles.com, and you can also look up George's Cards and Collectibles on Facebook. So a couple of different ways to check those out. And, well, just to give you a little sample of some of the things uh, going on a little bit later tonight, the number one contender to the Monster Factory Heavyweight Championship, we saw him walk in a little bit earlier, QT Marshall. He'll be challenging the Monster Abyss. We'll see if we can maybe get a word with him in a little bit. Also, two former heavyweight champions will be colliding as Clutch Adams. He'll go at it with Nick Camarado. Those are just two of the many matches that are set for tonight's card. And it's all right here at the world-famous Monster Factory, 541 Mantua Avenue in Paulsboro, New Jersey. The doors open at 6. The action officially starts at 7. And we'll be telling you more about it as the hour goes on, seeing if we can get a word with a few of the folks here at the Monster Factory. I know uh, Bender stepped out for a little bit. He... uh, was hoping to be hoping to get a little bit of airtime. 
we're uh, we're certainly you know heading into a really really big show this this tonight. So if you can, if you're in the air, a really big shoe, as Ed Sullivan used to say. <laughs> yeah, no, you're way too young. No, for I, that. I get. Hell, I'm got, way too I young got the for reference. that. Who am I kidding? I got the reference. I laughed. Um, <laughs> even Ted E. Falls going. I was barely a kid when that was going on. <laughs> Oh, not quite. Okay. Well, I I tried to throw it out there for you. <laughs> um, <laughs> tried to do you a solid, yeah, Ted. If you're in the area, please, by all means, head down tonight. It's it's going to be a great night of wrestling. So you know, don't hesitate. Yeah, and a very short turnaround. As uh, actually one week from tonight, programming note. We're right on back here as we've got another event, and it's a special fan appreciation night next week. Yeah, uh, I believe. I'll have to double-check uh, during the break here, but I believe all... Or actually, I'll have you double-check because I'll have the Periscope uh, feed going, but um, I believe the tickets are just 5 bucks for next Saturday's show. Yeah. So, yeah, definitely a lot of fun ways to come on down here. We'll give you the rest of the card lineup for that, some news notes, and a litany of other things as, well, we're up against it here as we tend to do because we tend to go off topic a lot and things of that nature we're here live at the world famous monster factory and we're going to send it back to the studio and teddy fall to take care of a few bills because that's important and we'll be back shortly here on pro wrestling weekly on 1490 wbcb and online at wbcb 1490.com He's oh, got man. the Luigi death stare from Ferran, so he might have I didn't it. give you the Luigi death stare. That's Shh. not true. You're breaking cave <laughs> Breaking cave <K-Fabe. laughs> Gonna break something else during this commercial. There we All go. Right. That's what I like to see. And now, more Pro Wrestling Weekly with your hosts, Ferran Derry and Lucas DeSangro. Are okay. we getting into that controversy again? Ugh, I know how it feels, and it's not fun. Welcome back to Pro Wrestling Weekly here on 1490 WBCB and online at WBCB1490.com. Ferran Derry here alongside... Where the hell did Lucas go? No, I, he, he stepped out for a moment, and he should be back here shortly, unless he forgot how long a commercial break is. Who, who knows with him? He is very random, to say the least. Uh, let's see. Looking at the Facebook fan page, uh, oh, a few people uh, expressing... Their likes and interest in the Periscope broadcast. We're having a little fun during the commercial break, kind of just hyping things up and whatnot. We are here live at the world-famous Monster Factory, 541 Mantua Avenue in Paulsboro, New Jersey. As action goes on tonight, let me give you a rundown of the card real quick. The full card is, uh, was brought to me prior to the start of the program. The Down Boys, they'll be facing paid in full in a rematch that... Saw Peyton Full score the upset win. Also, a triple threat supersonic number one contender match. This uh, just has the chance to be off the charts amazing. Between Nick Westgate, Anthony Bennett, and LSG, the winner will face supersonic champion Mikey Webb next month. Plus, Monster Factory Girls champion Deanna Perrazzo picks up her red-hot feud with Miranda Vanette as they square off with the title on the line. Also, TK Orion challenges Punisher Martinez. Wildman Congo battles WWE and Monster Factory alum Cliff Compton. Plus two former heavyweight champions collide as Clutch Adams goes at it with Nick Camarado. And speaking of heavyweight champions, the Monster Abyss defends the Monster Factory heavyweight championship against QT Marshall. And tickets are available at the door for tonight's event. And it's here at the world-famous Monster Factory, 541 Mantua Avenue in Paulsboro, New Jersey. Definitely want to come out for that. And if nothing else, say hi to Twitch and I as we're here as well. Now the doors open at 6, the action officially starts at 7. Make sure you get updates on all things Monster Factory at their website, monsterfactory.org, as well as on YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Plus check out past matches, behind the scenes video, and more at the mfnetwork.com. Lucas, how nice of you to join us. Yeah, I apologize for that. I had to uh, take care of some business. Taking care of the business as you do, if you will. Yes, sir. Something like that. Ah, so that's right. It gave me time to run down the whole card. And yeah, we'll be doing that a little bit more as we go on here. Uh, into some news and notes, because we've got that going on as well. Yeah. A lot going on. Uh, well, it turns out that it'll be a Yeslemania after all. Well, sort of. Uh, retired WWE star Daniel Bryan is scheduled to be a part of WrestleMania 32 weekend in Texas. 
Where, what's what's he doing? Well, uh, WWE announced yesterday that Brian has been added to the WrestleMania Access fan event during Mania weekend. That 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 should be pretty cool, actually. Yeah, his time slot is WrestleMania Sunday, April third, ten a.m., and he is one of five premium VIP superstars uh, who will be there over the course of the weekend. They garner a hundred and ninety dollar price tag for admission to access plus a meet and greet with those individuals. The others include Sting on Friday night, Roman Reigns Saturday morning, The Undertaker Saturday afternoon, and Seth Rollins early Sunday morning prior to Brian's appearance. So Seth Rollins. Uh, crutches and all will be there uh, i believe eight o'clock that uh, sunday morning wrestlemania sunday morning wow plus vip star scheduled to appear at access include dean ambrose rick flair and charlotte on thursday the uh, march 31st day chris jericho on friday that's no april fool's joke superstar billy graham alberto del rio the dudley boys kevin owens and bray wyatt all on saturday wait wait superstar billy graham mm-hmm wow Talk about a blast from the past. Absolutely. And then Randy Orton on Sunday. Nice, nice. Now, tickets for access on WrestleMania weekend went on sale this morning. So those who are on their way to Texas uh, probably, hopefully, have a few shekels to shell out, for lack of a better term, to go ahead and make that a thing. It's WrestleMania. You got to go all out, you know. I'm not saying spend all your money, but, you know. Live a little. It's WrestleMania. True. I guess if you can get down there, and what else are you going to do? And well, I don't know. Arl- was it Arlington? Uh, sub- yeah, I'm pretty sure. Suburban Dallas. I don't know. I can't say that I've ever been that way. True. And it's going to be a while before I do if that ever happens. <laughs> oh, and some other good news. A uh, the announcement from WWE this past Monday that The Godfather has been named the second entrant in the WWE Hall of Fame class of 2016. Charles Wright, a former Monster Factory student, worked for WWE from 1991 to 2002 under various gimmicks, including Papa Shango, Kama Mustafa, mm. The Godfather, and The Good Father. <laughs> no, nice little nod to his right to censor gimmick. Of course. And has made sporadic appearances for WWE since then, so... Good to see a, another Monster Factory alum making it into the WWE Hall of Fame. True. And uh, speaking of, you know, Hall of Fame, WrestleMania, it's a big deal. Um, it's all a big deal, but WrestleMania has gotten a sponsorship deal. Yeah. So it's, uh, it's definitely been, yeah. Uh, so WWE announced on Tuesday that the exclusive present, presenting partner of WrestleMania 32 will be another, none other than Snickers. Snickers and WWE... Oh, not that kind of Snickers. Easy there, Muttley. Uh, Snickers and WWE will send one lucky fan to WrestleMania 32 Live as part of the digital sweepstakes where fans will be asked, what are you, who are you when you're hungry? I'm Twitch when I'm hungry. I'm a bit crazy. <laughs> so you must be hungry all the time, then. Accurate. I'm, I'm a teenage boy. Yeah, I'm hungry all the time, actually. Um, so, yeah. Was that the business he went to take care of? Was getting something to eat while uh, dur- during the commercial break? Yes, so I could, you know, quell the beast inside. Careful now. Uh, in <laughs> in other news, WWE uh, Hall of Famer Jim Ross has signed a deal with CBS Sports to become a boxing play-by-play commentator. Ooh. Ross will make his debut on March 12th at the Knockouts at the D event in Las Vegas, Nevada. Do I want to know why you chuckled there? No. Actually, I think I do know why. Don't get us kicked off the air. <laughs> Ross will reading. also be debuting as the voice of New Japan Pro Wrestling on AXS this Friday, March 4th. Ooh, I cannot wait for that. I'm gonna, I already have New, J- New Japan DVR'd, so... Already got it pinned in, don't you? Oh, yeah. Or or something along those lines. All right. And also the WWE Night of Champions pay-per-view. Yeah. There's an announcement about that that's going to be held on September 25th in Indianapolis, Indiana at the Bankers Life Fieldhouse. And the announcement was made this past Tuesday at SmackDown at the same venue. So they got their preliminary ticket purchases for that going on. This should be a... So, wow. 
Yeah. I mean, we're still a ways away from that. I mean, that's September, and we're here in February, so there's a lot of things still to go on between that. Uh, WrestleMania, oh, yeah. there's Extreme Rules, I'm sure Payback's going to be in there somewhere, Money in the Bank, SummerSlam, just to name a few. Who do you think is a contender to win Money in the Bank this year? I think it's too early to tell. I mean, we don't know who the champion's going to be by that point. That's one of those we'll have to wait until the summer to really hone in and dissect and assess and analyze and do all the other things that we tend to do. That is very true. Um, who do you think would be a good, um, you know, who do you think would be a good opponent for Owens, though, at WrestleMania? We, still, we only have three matches announced, and there's still a lot of time for the card to, you know, fill. Um, hmm. I mean, I know it's not going to happen, but I'd be intrigued by a Kevin Owens-Bray Wyatt match. Ooh. The Battle of the Running Sentin Bomb. Oh, why not? I mean, they've had WrestleManias with the Battles of the Full Nelson. <laughs> uh, we love you, Billy Jack Haynes. <laughs> yes, we do. And Hercules, for that matter. Hercules, Hercules, yeah. No, not that... <laughs> You're definitely not a professor, but you sure are nutty, that's for sure. <laughs> oh, you know it. You were, you were waiting for me to get something in there. Yeah, true. I was. Oh, goodness. Um, oh, John from Northeast Philly throwing uh, a few comments in there. He thinks AJ Styles is a good uh, Money in the Bank possible winner. That, that would be interesting to see. Uh, and also, in reference to uh, Jim Ross, he said, JR has passed boxing commentary experience with his ringside commentary with the many boxing matches that have occurred during his WWE tenure. <laughs> Great signing by CBS Sports. Always love good old JR. Yeah, I hope he calls the haymakers. Oh, what a slobber knocker right hook right there. On a... I guess this means that he's not uh, being considered for that Pittsburgh Pirates play-by-play uh, -play job that we were talking about a couple of months ago. That sort of... That would be kind of fun, but... By God! Pittsburgh Pirates are the new world champions of baseball. Just a, that, that throaty yell he does. Yeah, I was going to say, that would be... Well, that would definitely take a lot. That's something we haven't seen since 1979, I think. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. That was the We Are Family year. What well, well, what what was... The song We Are Family by Sister Sledge, that uh, was that was kind of the anthem for the Pittsburgh Pirates that year. Ah. Uh, kind of in the same vein, I think, with the 80 Phillies, uh, Ain't No Stopping Us Now was the <laughs> Was it was the 10-minute Redux version? Uh, probably not. <laughs> no, I would imagine it is the 3-minute and 20-some-odd second one that most of us are familiar with. Yeah, the things that I know, considering it, it's a chart topper. The, the fact other. that I remembered you told me that one. You do remember some strange things that we have conversations about. This is uh, this is most certainly accurate. Oh, goodness. All right, we're closing in on about that time to uh, send things back to the studio. But before I do so, you know what time it is. Time don't say, I was going to say don't say clobber in time. Why not? You keep stifling me on that. That's <laughs> not fair. You know, if only I were back in the studio, I would hit the that is not fair drop. But alas, we are here. I'll save it for March 12th. How about that? Okay. Next time we're back in the studio. But no, today is a fun day for the Broken Goblet Brewery because that's what time it is. Time for me to tell you about my okay, favorite, uh, yeah, my, my favorite watering hole, as it were. Swimming hole, you know. Ollie not quite, Williams. not quite Ollie Williams swimming hole. No. Uh, today is a fun day for the Broken Goblet Brewery over at 1500 Grundy's Lane in Bristol, PA. Why, you might ask? Why? There we go. Thank you. I was wondering if you were going to do that. Well, it is the Band of Brewers 2016 Celebration Day at the Goblet. Ooh. That's right. Last week they had the, uh, they had the competition of the different breweries, and uh, Broken Goblet won the competition, mm, despite being a, a first-time entrant in it. That's, that's so, pretty awesome. Yeah, you can definitely go and uh, pose for pictures with the trophy that definitely didn't get smashed, unlike most trophies in professional wrestling. Yeah, that's usually how it works. That is usually how it works. Plus, just hitting the taps today, you can enjoy the winning beer from the T-Cision a few weeks ago, the new 2016 version of Bubba's Tea Bag. It is an ale brewed with cinnamon plum tea. Ooh. I don't know. Peculiar flavor choice. 
It is, but it is really good. That was my favorite out of the primaries before I even knew what it was. I found out that that was the one of the three that made it to the final vote and turned out to be the one that won it all. So I was very excited for that. That was uh, far and above my favorite of these six that were given to us irregulars. Plus, also today, Jay's Steak and Hoagie food truck will be outside. So make sure to get those beer dip sandwiches. Those are always fun. Plus, it is a firkin' awesome Saturday. As at 4 o'clock this afternoon, you love it when I throw that out there. Yep, firkin' awesome. It's firkin' awesome. It's like, tee-hee, he almost said that other word that I can't say. What, freaking? You're on thin ice there, Twitch. You're, you, you don't want to give Ted back in the studio a heart attack. Stop it. I'm not actually going to say it. I know we're going to get He's letters. like hovering over the dump button. Ted, relax. Speak. I'm not going to say that word. <laughs> you can relax. Anyway, it is, yes, it is a Firkin Awesome Saturday. Is at 4 o'clock this afternoon. The boys at B-Gob will be tapping a Firkin of Juniper Berry Black Peppercorn Wheat Ale. Mm. That is a lot of intricate, complicated flavors all being thrown together. It's a shame I'm down here. I'm probably going to miss it. Oh, well. I'm sure they'll have it around again. Also, speaking of interesting flavors, this Friday, March 4th, is the first bottle release of the year for the Broken Goblet, a peppermint white chocolate version of their yin-yang oatmeal stout. Mm. Yeah, that is interesting. Yeah, just before the weather gets too warm, perfect time to stop in and pick up a bottle or two of this delicious brew. Mm. <laughs> Open Wednesday through Sunday. It's always a good time at the Broken Goblet Brewery, 1500 Grundy's Lane in Bristol, PA. Broken Goblet Brewing, the semi-official brewery of Pro Wrestling Weekly. That's going to just about, uh, yeah, that's going to just about do it for our second segment here. We're going to go ahead and send things back to the studio. And Ted Efaw, who has been uh, uproarious with laughter at our hijinks and antics and otherwise. Hilarity. And our hilarity and other things that I will not say because, again, that will get us in trouble. Uh. Yeah, no dump buttons. Oh, mm. sorry to keep you awake. Yeah. That's that's funny. For on, it's very funny. Yeah, I know. That's freaking hilarious. I see what you did there. All right, we're coming back here in a, a little bit. We'll send things back to the studio. We'll see if we can get a word with uh, either Bender or maybe QT Marshall. We'll see if we can get him over here before his huge title match later tonight against the Monster Abyss. This is Pro Wrestling Weekly here on 1490 WBCB and online at WBCB1490.com. Pro Wrestling Weekly presents Today in Wrestling History, February 27. On this date in 2000, the WWF held its No Way Out pay-per-view. In the main event, Triple H pinned Cactus Jack in a Hell in a Cell match to retain the WWF World Heavyweight Championship. On this date in 2006, WWE Monday Night Raw aired live from Washington, D.C. In the main event, Ric Flair defeated Carlito. On this date in 2012, WWE Monday Night Raw aired live from Portland, Oregon. In the main event, Sheamus and The Big Show defeated Cody Rhodes and Mark Henry in a tag team match. On this date in 2014, WWE held its NXT Arrival Network exclusive. In the main event, Adrian Neville defeated Bo Dallas in a ladder match to win the NXT Championship. This has been Today in Wrestling History, February 27. Welcome back to Pro Wrestling Weekly here on 1490 WBCB and online at WBCB1490.com. For Ron Derry alongside Lucas Twitch DeSangro, we are live at the world-famous Monster Factory at 541 Mantua Avenue in Paulsboro, New Jersey, gearing up for the huge event tonight and joining us here at the commentator's desk. Not that either of us will be commentating the event tonight, but it's a better setup than anywhere else. What the hell? Why not? You know, uh, we've got challenger to the Monster Factory Heavyweight Championship and I believe a former champion in his own right. That's right. QT Marshall. Yeah, I'm here. Yeah, I guess I showed up a little too early. So, uh, well, I didn't realize there was going to be a radio show going on, so uh, <laughs> sorry for if I made any noise earlier. No, 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 you were fine. You were you were more than fine. It was good to get you over here because, I mean, number one contender to the championship, why not get you over here and kind of, I guess, let us know, those who 
may I mean you've been seen all over the place on uh, on on Ring of Honor and a few other places, but just I guess you know let us know a little bit about yourself for those who may not necessarily be familiar with God's gift, QT Marshall. Yeah, I'm just uh, you know probably the greatest graduate to ever come out of the Monster Factory. So you know that's why I am God's gift to professional wrestling. Uh, that was a name that was given to me, and you know tonight we'll show everyone why. You know when I uh, recapture the Monster Factory. Pro Wrestling Heavyweight Championship, you know what I mean? So, uh, other than that, just a laid-back guy who likes to, you know, go out there and entertain, have a good time. And we're certainly looking forward to uh, to the entertainment that's going on all tonight. I didn't want to uh, take you too much away from your preparation. Just wanted to grab you for, uh, for a minute or two, see if we could get a word to, to hype up the big match tonight. Uh, uh, I mean, the Monster Abyss been all over the place in, in TNA. Uh, what kind of strategy do you have going against somebody uh, of that size? Uh, to not let him kill me, basically. <laughs> no. uh, so, well, uh, basically, in uh, like I think around 2008, I did a security spot at TNA, and it was with Abyss. And, uh, you know, he pulled the chair out of his hand, and he returned the favor with a black hole slam, so it left me laying. So uh, I have a little, a little bone to pick with him, so... That's what's, I'm going to return the favor tonight. A little, little bit of history there. And that goes back eight years. Talk, eight that's, years. That's a heck of a grudge. He didn't even know about it either. But uh, I guess he saw the posts on social media. And so I think he's scared. Uh, I think he's scared. He should be. Because, uh, you know, well, I have Luis in my corner. So. Ah, uh, yes, from the real life heels. Right. Fresh off the business. Punisher. Punisher Martinez. <sighs> no, no. A, uh, a, a a daring uh, tandem, to say the least. And, right. In fact, that's why you're currently the Monster Factory Tag Team Champion, so you can be a dual champion here in the Monster yeah. Factory, which right. I don't think that's something that's uh, been done in the, the history, has it? Mm, you know, I don't know. I, I'm not going to lie. I don't want to say... Because, you know, as soon as I make the answer... and it, Then, then somebody's going to correct gonna you on it. Correct. That's, yeah. I'm, I can either confirm nor deny. I'm just uh, speculating, as I tend to do as a broadcast journalist. Well, one, well when I was living in uh, Orlando... At one time, I was I was holding four championships. Yeah. Wow! It was a, a Florida title, the IWA Puerto Rican Championship. Uh, there was another company I was their champion, a DCW or one of those, you know, fly by nights. And then there was it was a fan made championship that I guess he had given to one of the guys, and then I beat him, so I took it. <laughs> I only had it for one show because then I threw it in the garbage. You know, <laughs> it was you know. Hopefully the same fate doesn't fall our, uh, our Periscope Championship yeah, that has made yeah. its way here to the uh, to the Monster Factory as I'm a player. I'm going to win that one, too. They they just don't know it yet. <laughs> oh, boy. Chad Kensington, look out. But, yeah, no, tonight uh, tonight I'm excited. It's going to be a great night. Uh, a lot of great matches. I mean, Deanna and, and MV are, you know, they're picking up where they left off. And, I mean, Deanna's been on a tear. So uh, she's like, uh, I try to say she, what she's doing is basically what I did. Like, I mean, hell, on a couple couple weeks from now, I'll be on an episode of NXT, you know. A couple days, well, actually two weeks from now, we'll be doing a Ring of Honor show. So the only one I got to hit is Impact Wrestling. So if I could do all three of those, you know, then her and I will have a lot more in common, you know. Um, well, I was going to say, if you, you beat Abyss into submission, maybe he'll put a, put a good go. word into uh, the folks at TNA to That's get right. you down there. That's right. Let, have them let you, uh, or have him let TNA know that you are the real deal. That's right. I'm going to prove it tonight. You know, I'm excited for it, though. I mean, uh, definitely one of the toughest challenges I've ever had, you know, with the exception of my uh, my claim to fame, the IWA Puerto Rico match with Daniel Bryan. Uh, you know, oh, yeah. Toot, toot. toot. Uh, <laughs> but other than that, you know, this is one of the definitely one of the higher profile matches I, I'll be having. So, uh, you know, when I win, it'll be even better. So, because all the other ones I've lost. <laughs> Oh, except for the tag titles, which you and Luis currently have. Right, of so. course, of course. But, you know, I mean, one-on-one uh, -on -one matches by myself. Because, oh, okay, yeah. You know, not to say that, you know, maybe Punisher's not going to help me out tonight, you know. Depends. You know, well, we, certainly, you know how we do things, so. Exactly. It certainly wouldn't hurt to have him in your corner. Absolutely not. But uh, A counter for Janice, if nothing else. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> hey, you, know, you better not bring her here. Oh, boy. What? All right, QT Marshall, thank you so much for uh, taking a few minutes here. Uh, again, didn't want to take too terribly much away from your preparation. Good luck tonight against Abyss.
and looking forward to it. And uh, the fans who will be here are looking forward to a great match as well. All right. I appreciate it, guys. Yeah. All right. QT Keep Marshall. Will we'll, we'll do. Thank you so much. Never know uh, who's going to stop by uh, here on the the old program, uh, in, including this guy. I know we've been hyping him for uh, for just a little bit. Taking off the jacket. Yeah, taking off the jacket, getting ready to uh, to to hop into the chair here for the live radio show. So yeah, be careful, go. be careful of the uh, the old language there. We we mentioned the Monster Factory Periscope Championship. He is the first ever Monster Factory Periscope Champion. Yes, uh, made the belt himself. Bender. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I made that belt myself and. Uh, my complete reign was uh, 10 minutes. Are you sure? I thought it was a lot longer than that. Well, it's one of those officiality type well, things. Well, okay, I mean, here's the thing. Uh, I made the belt like six months ago. And didn't have the courage to tell anyone? Well, no, I, I told everybody, but it wasn't permitted to debut until, oh, you know, the, the last uh, last show we had. And, Three weeks ago. Mm-hmm. And my title reign that night was, well, about 10 minutes before Chad Kensington came out and stole it from me. And it's in the same vein that Ric Flair uh, says that he is a 21-time heavyweight champion, but due to various uh, businesses and behind-the-scenes things, he is officially recognized as a 16-time world champion. Same type deal. So uh, unofficially, he is a 6-month and 10-minute long champion, but officially it's just a 10-minute reign. Mm-hmm. I was going to say, he's about ready to snarl at me here like this. <laughs> uh, I, but I, I don't have... You, you, just, oh, you're, you're staying out of this one? Yeah. That's a first. I was going to say that I was... You might not have even faced Chad Kensington. I was about to... I was. I almost took my gear off. I, I some Danny said... Uh, Wait, you are going to take your gear off? Well, I was about... <laughs> no. I was taking off my gear, and Danny said, anybody else want to come out and challenge Bender? And I was about to put my gear right back on and walk out there and win that title. Now, and I had your music all queued up and everything, too. I was ready, man. It, it, except for you wouldn't have won it, Lucas. I mean, come on. It's me. <laughs> <laughs> Keep telling me. I was going to say, t tell, tell the folks a little bit now. I was going to say, your history here, you've been here about, what, 13 months, I believe it is now? Mm -hmm. A little yeah. more than? Yeah. Closing in on 14? Yeah, just over a year, yeah. Yeah. Uh, tell the listeners a little bit about how you started, what got you into here, things of that nature. Well, the thing is, um, I've been wanting to be a pro wrestler for most of my life, but two things got in my way. One of them was doubt, because people are like, "You're, you're, you know, you're small. You're, you're not gonna, you're, no one's gonna take you seriously. You're not gonna make it." And you, you know, and let's just face it, you're not as athletic as, you know, say, Rey Mysterio or any other cruiserweight for that matter. And the other thing, the bigger thing, was money. Like, yes. Yeah. For those of you not listening, uh, or are listening rather. Um, I think we knew what you meant. Tele it, telepathically. It, yeah. It, 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 it costs money to come to pro wrestling school, and you know, and, you know, when you were when I was growing up, having a job and a car and st other stuff that I didn't need, like a motorcycle, <laughs> I just didn't have the did not have the funds to uh, pay for tuition for a wrestling school. But then, uh, around this time, around last year, is when I decided, like, you know what, I want to go train, and I went to the Monster Factory. For an open house and a tryout, and I remember I was, that tryout too. <laughs> that was uh yeah, and I I was accepted, and ever since then, like you know, it's been a hell of an experience. I mean, who, have you gotten to meet anybody special along the way? I mean, like we have seminars stuff like that. What what has been some of the best parts about training here? Well, yeah, you definitely meet some gr some great people. Um, I've had the pleasure of meeting uh, people like MVP. Uh, X Pac, uh, C W Anderson, Nigel McGuinness, Les Thatcher, Abyss, of course. And <laughs> fun, funny story. The uh, last time Abyss was here, I was I had the pleasure of driving him to the airport. And on the way there, we hit a major traffic jam, and I had to <laughs> basically, if, if for anyone that's local to like the Philadelphia area, it was right on I ninety five. Right after the the Columbia Boulevard exit or Delaware Ave, as it's also oh, called. Oh, Columbus Boulevard. Okay, right yeah. around exit twenty there. Got yeah. it. Yeah, and I had just passed that, and we hit a traffic jam. It was a complete standstill, and I was like, I was like, oh crap! I, I, I what are we gonna do? And he's like worried. He's like, oh man, I can't miss this flight. Oh my god. He's like, uh, he was like getting a little upset. So then I was. 
And without even thinking, I'm all the way in the left-hand lane. I pull onto the shoulder, and I just put it in reverse. And I backed all the way down to the till I could get off the exit. I got off and then went down a little bit and got around whatever had happened. Apparently, a tractor trail had turned over or something. <sighs> And was blocking three lanes, so yeah, I got around that, and that that, that was that was pretty interesting. <laughs> hey, you got into his flight on time. I'm yeah. sure you got brownie points for that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Certainly can't go wrong with that. <laughs> so yeah, just some some of the stories that uh, that pop up, to say the least, when it comes to I mean, anything can happen in professional wrestling. That's for sure. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. and uh, yeah, a lot of interesting road stories like. Yeah, you hear about some things experiencing, like like CM Punk and Kofi Kingston getting pulled over and having their car searched for drugs and shit. And things of that nature, yes. A lot of interesting stories. Yeah. Anyway, uh, Bender, thank you so much for uh, for, for chiming on for, uh, for a few minutes. Uh, looking forward to seeing you in action and uh, hopefully at some point regaining your Periscope championship here at the, uh, the Monster oh, Factory. Oh, I'll get that back. You better believe it. <laughs> Who knows? Maybe you'll get it from Chad Kensington tonight. Yeah, maybe. We'll see. I might have to, if he starts, you know, running his mouth again, I'll I'll come out and answer the challenge. Mm-hmm. There we go. All right. Uh, Bender, thank you so much for uh, for joining us here. Always a pleasure, and uh, looking forward to uh, what all the fun that's going to go on here tonight, which we're going to uh, spend the next uh, little bit talking about, uh, as we've only got a couple minutes left in the program here. Uh, Bender, thank you so much for joining the program. Right. No problem. Thank you. Mm-hmm. No problem. Alrighty, so as I mentioned, this uh, this is the place to be tonight. It's uh, the world famous Monster Factory. We're here at 541 Mantua Avenue, Paulsboro, New Jersey. It's a fantastic show. The Down Boys are going to be taking on Peyton Full. That's a rematch from three weeks ago. Peyton Full scoring the upset win. The Triple Threat Supersonic Number One Contender match. Nick Westgate, Anthony Bennett, and LSG. Yeah, what a trifecta. Oof. And LSG, another guy that just was fresh off his run in the Ring on Ring of Honor Top Prospect Tournament. Yeah, there, there, there. The names from the Monster Factor are certainly certainly cropping up there, to say the least. Uh, also, uh, well, the winner will be taking on Mikey Webb coming up in March. Uh, plus, in Monster Factory Girls action, champion Deanna Perazzo picks up her red hot feud with Miranda Vanette as they square off with the title on the line. Uh, TK Orion challenges Punisher Martinez from the Real Life Heels. Also, Wildman Congo battles WWE and Monster Factory alum Cliff Compton, mm. who, uh, as you remember, was Domino uh, from the Deuce and Domino tag team back they, in the mid-2000s. They, they faced off against each other for um, well, the Congo and, and uh, Compton in the Monster Factory tag tournament. It was Mikey Webb and Congo versus Cliff Compton in the Blue Meanie. Ah, uh, yeah, so there's a little bit of history there as well. Uh, former heavyweight champions colliding as Clutch Adams goes at it with Nick Camarado. It's going to be a spectacular match. I'm looking forward to that. (laughs) And speaking of heavyweight champions, as uh, you heard a little bit earlier, the Monster Abyss defending the Monster Factory Heavyweight Championship against QT Marshall. Tickets available at the door for tonight's event at the world-famous Monster Factory, 541 Mantua Avenue in Paulsboro, New Jersey. Doors open at 6. The action officially starts at 7. Get updates on all things Monster Factory at their website, monsterfactory.org, as well as YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You can also check out past matches, behind-the-scenes video, and more at the mfnetwork.com. Definitely want to check it out, if for no other reason than to say hi to Lucas and I, but Mm. I I think that you'll find the action much more appealing than either of us. Yeah. That is uh, true, to be sure. Uh, We've got pretty much a minute left, just enough time for... Birthdays. You're so energetic. You're running on no sleep. I was trying not to say it too loud. Um... All right, fair enough. We're going way back on this one. On this date in 1888, Earl Caddock was born. The popular professional wrestler during the World War I era and the first to use the moniker Man of a Thousand Holds, as well as the 2007 inductee of the Professional Wrestling Hall of Fame, passed away in 1950 at the age of 62. Told you we were going way back. Who is it? Earl Caddock. Oh, oh, that was his actual name. That was his, yeah, that was the name that he went by. Yeah, they didn't exactly have gimmicks and things back in the World War One era. Ah, yes, about a hundred years ago was when mm. his uh, prime was. Mm. 
So, yeah, there you have that. Anyway, that's going to do it for us. We'll be back here next week at the Monster Factory for another broadcast as there's another show next week. So a very short turnaround. Who knows what's going to happen? Thank you to Teddy Faw back in the studio. For Lucas DeSangro, I'm Ferran Derry. Thank you for tuning in to Pro Wrestling Weekly here on 1490 WBCB and online at WBCB1490.com. It is 1 o'clock and all's well here at the Monster Factory. Serving you better than ever before. This is 1490 WBCB.